All right, let's turn over to the book of Matthew. Whoops, Matthew chapter 6, just tore my page. Are you sick, brother? No. Huh? Do I need to specify where? <laughs> what a terrible pastor. <laughs> May we pray. Lord, as I come into your presence, Father, I, I come in the name of Jesus Christ, and I thank you for the blood that he has shed for us. And Lord, I thank you for the many, many miracles that only that blood can perform. And I thank you for those that have yet to be performed, but I know will be. And Father, we, as we come to you this morning, we, we're going to learn how to talk to you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that this is simple, the way you would like to have it put. I pray that this representation of your word would be accurate to you, would be pleasing to you. And just forgive me where I failed you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, that's what we've been talking about, and we've been in, in, in Matthew chapter 6. We talked about, take heed that you don't do your alms before men, uh, uh, that we do them for the glory of God. We do these things in secret, and he rewards us openly, and we, we've tasted those rewards time after time. Um, <clears throat> but more so, we looked at last week about... Uh, about prayer, and, and we, we prayed that, that it needs to be, we need to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ, we talked about in uh, uh, Leviticus. Uh, we talked about them offering strange fire, and how the sons of Aaron, how they got toasted, they got roasted, uh, because they offered strange fire. And uh, the Lord doesn't really take kindly to violating his methods and his ways. It's still a sin, but some things he really don't like. Uh, and that's one of them. You know, it's a real insult, I believe, to God when people just lackadaisically throw up a prayer and, and say, well, I prayed for you today, prayed to God, and, and this and that, and this and that. Well, first of all, for the lost person, as I said before, and we, when we talk about scripturally, and we'll do that some more today, they may as well stand over there and talk to that wall. That's, if they don't know Christ, the only, the only prayer that God's going to hear out of those folks is that repentance prayer that brings them to salvation. That's it. Uh, that may be a cold thing to say, and, but, it's, but you know, our God is still, he thinks a lot about himself. A lot about his name. He's very jealous. Uh, we have a, a, quite a warped way of thinking uh, about prayer. Even the morning again believers in Jesus Christ can have warped ways because they have been set in their own ways. We have, and, and we don't follow that. But we talked about that last week. Uh, we talked about the sweet-smelling savor of those prayers being lifted up. We talked about um, having our prayers going up in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in the name of Allah, not in the name of, 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 of God, but in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, because there's many gods, people make gods out for themselves every day. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to talk a little bit about, when we're, as we're reading these passages of Scripture, take a look at verse 5 with me. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. We spoke on that last week also. Uh, that doesn't mean don't pray. I use the, it doesn't mean don't pray openly. Jesus and his disciples prayed openly, so that's certainly what, not what he was talking about. Um, he wasn't talking that we shouldn't get together for prayer meetings. Uh, because he, we've been encouraged to do that. We see that in, we saw that in Acts chapter 12, Peter, he was in prison. The whole church got together over at John Mark's house, and what did they do? They prayed. They prayed constantly, without ceasing. Uh, so, so that's what we are to do. And he heard that prayer. And, and um, so we know that we're to, to gather together. We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together in a manner of which some do. God tells us that. So we understand that. We understand that he's not telling us 
don't pray aloud, don't pray with a group, group of prayer warriors. That's not what he's telling us at all here. We see in verse 7, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Vain repetition. Um, and, and, I, and I caution Christians right here, praying the same prayer to God is exactly what he's talking about. Vain repetitions. I'm not saying the same request. I'm saying if you're bathing something in prayer, don't get that confused. But it's, I used the example, our Lord's Prayer is what we always called it. Uh, and we'll be looking at that um, again. Our Lord's Prayer to, to say that I have prayed because I recited this, this, these scriptures is, is totally inaccurate. Uh, totally inaccurate. Even though we may have grown up as children doing that, it was a wonderful thing. There's nothing wrong with us reciting that as a group together in church. But we're not praying. When we recite that, we are not praying. That, it, that was a model. It was an example. And it contained elements. Ladies uh, uh, and some guys that are a little more talented than I am, I like to cook, but I'm one of those guys when I cook, we call it slop, don't we, Rebecca? The kids always like when I made slop. You know what slop was? Whatever I wanted to put in. So, so you know, it was, it was never a recipe. It was just this, 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 voila. Y'all might call it witch's brew. I don't know. But... Um, <clears throat> But elements or ingredients, if you will, is what Jesus taught. That's what he was showing in his prayer, in this model prayer. Uh, coming, coming up on Thanksgiving, and I know nobody's looking forward to that, and uh, in this house, <laughs> uh, coming up on Thanksgiving, we know that, that if you're going to make something special, uh, you, need, you need the ingredients. So you first, but before you get the ingredients, you need the recipe. Okay, the Lord's going to give us the recipe. And then we have, we have to supply the ingredients. We have to supply the ingredients. He's going to give us the recipe on how to pray uh, as we get into this a little heavier. We see in, uh, 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 we know that first of all, as I said the last week, week before perhaps, you got to be saved, okay? You have to be saved. I mean, I didn't say you have to have read and stated a sinner's prayer. I said you have to be saved. That is not something that I can do, you can do. That's something that only God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, can do in the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's his business. Um, you know, I, 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 can, I can pray with you. I can show you the Romans road. I can, I can, I can say it for you. And... and and, and, and here's my old cliche, that and a buck 65 will buy you a cup of coffee. It won't get you to heaven. That you have to do yourself with the Lord. Um, so we, we see that to pray, to pray. He loves hearing that repentant sinner's prayer. He loves it. The angels in heaven, what do they do? They rejoice. They rejoice. Um, and, and they've been rejoicing this week. I know that. And uh, you'll hear more about that at another time. So, so as we look at the scriptures this morning, I want you to take a look at Ephesians chapter 2. You can mark yourself there in Matthew 6, but I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 2 with me. Somebody had an idea. I heard a phone go, bling. I said somebody had an idea. Ephesians chapter 2, look at verse 18 with me. Verse 18 says, For through who? And who's that him? That him is Jesus Christ. We both have access by one spirit, how? Unto the Father. So, so first of all, we must, in order to get access, we have to be saved. No access without that. Um, and then, of course, being saved, we know that we have the Holy Spirit of God indwelt in us. We get, he, he baptizes us in the Holy Spirit the moment we get saved. And the scripture tells us here in verse 18, for through him we both have access by one, see that great big capital S there, spirit unto the Father. That's the Holy Spirit of God. That's what it takes 
to have access. You notice the words, the, the, the passage of Scripture says, have access. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all had access to the church building this morning, to the, to the sanctuary this morning. There's a lot of people that won't be here today that have they have access, but they're not using it, right? They didn't go through the door. They have the access, but they didn't go through the door. So when we see that, that, that in verse 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. He's our access. Doesn't mean we're going to get there. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about prayer. Okay? Just because you and I, born again believer in Jesus Christ, say a prayer doesn't mean that it gets to where we want it. Really? Come on, Pastor. I've always been taught different than that. We can, our prayers can be hindered. They can be stopped. They can be not listening, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, so, so, we, but so we have access, but there's terms. There's terms and conditions to that access. And, and uh, we'll get to those. I don't know that it'll be today or not. But uh, turn over to Romans chapter 8 with me. See, Jesus, Jesus is for our justification. Just When we get saved, we were justified just as though we never sinned. Uh, what a great, great gift that is. But he, then he gives the Holy Spirit for sanctification purposes. He, the, when we get the Holy Spirit of God, we're sanctified. We are set apart from all the rest of this dirty, yucky, old, sinful world. We are just set apart. We can all be blended together. We can be anywhere. But in the Holy Spirit, we are set apart. Amen? We're set apart. And, and that never ceases. And we're set apart as His as his. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Uh, in verse 26, we see likewise the what? Spirit. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we what? Should pray. Should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be what? Did he say you're going to fall out in the aisle and start and rattling off and speaking some jabberish that nobody... Uh, did he say that? No, no I, didn't th I didn't think he said that. In verse 27, And he that searcheth the hearts, that's the Holy Spirit of God, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. You see, when the Holy Spirit is in us, God knows every thing in our heart. Everything. Hebrews 4.12 tells us the word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he knows everything because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Bob. According to the will of God. Yes. He makes intercession. So, so you say, well, well, man, I have prayed for this, and I've prayed for this, and I've prayed for this, and it looks like I just got the opposite. He makes intercession for us according to the will of God. Not always our will. Not always our will. So sometimes our prayers are answered totally contrary than what we're looking for. Totally contrary to what we're looking for. Um, you ever start to pray... Now, you don't have to raise your hand for this, but, but, you, but you ever start to pray and, and, and God just seems so far away? Because I have. I, I, I've entered into a time of prayer, and when I have, it's like, man, Lord, you seem so far away. Just so far away. I don't know how to explain that to you. I just know how it feels. And, and, and I can tell you that, that, that usually one of two things is wrong when I go into this self-examination mode. And I believe the same applies for each and every one of you. Um, either, either some sin is in my life or some, or some disobedience, which is also sin. But there's some sin that's besetting me or some disobedience that, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm having to God's will that's hindering me. That's hindering me. So, so uh, look at Psalm chapter 66 with me.
and you all know just as well as I do, I have looked at another brother and sister in Christ. I've looked at my wife. She's not separate from a sister in Christ. I didn't mean it that way. I think she got saved. Um, I've looked at a brother and sister in Christ, and, 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 and I've said to them, you know, I, I've been praying for this, and I've been praying for this, and it just seems like the Lord. Lord's not, not doing it. He's not doing it. Um, and maybe you've heard yourself say that to yourself or your spouse or, 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 or another brother and sister in Christ. But, but, we, but I think what we need to understand about this powerful thing called prayer is it's pure. It's pure. Be ye holy as... Yeah. I mean, he wasn't talking to the wall. He wasn't talking to the unsaved. He's talking to us. Be ye holy as I am holy. So, so we kind of wonder. And then, our, then, then, it, then it causes maybe our faith to wane. Or we start tripling and stumbling because, because we refuse to recognize that we're not being so pure. We're just not being holy like we're supposed to be. But yet at the same time, we're asking God for this. And we're asking God for that. But we're not doing what we should be doing for God. Um, and that sometimes becomes a problem. Look at verse 18 here in chapter 66. If I regard, what's that word? What is iniquity? Sin. sin. And, and, and what is sin? Sin is transgression against whom? God's ways, God's will, God's God, God period. So let me ask you this. For those who are physically able, and there's no reason they can't be in God's house today, are they in iniquity? Is there iniquity in their heart? That scares you all to answer that, doesn't it? Don't answer by my standards. Answer by God's standards. Do they have iniquity in their heart? And they wonder why their lives are falling apart. They wonder why God's not hearing them. They say, I know I'm saved. Why isn't God hearing me? Well, here's a start. If I regard iniquity in my heart, what? It didn't say he might not hear me or he might choose to listen to me. It says he will not hear me. So that's something that I have to go through when I, think, when I begin to pray at times and I think, Lord, you seem so far away from me. Now I need to start examining myself. When I feel like that, I need to examine myself. Why does God feel so far away from me? I need to examine myself to see if there's iniquity in my heart. And you know what? Usually is. Usually is. That's one thing. Now, if you go to 1 Peter chapter 3 with me, we're looking at things that inhibits our prayers. We're talking about saved people. 1 Peter chapter 3. And, and, and I've had men whose, whose lives are falling apart, who, 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 who profess Christ as their Savior, and, 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 and they tell me, Pastor, I'm, I, you know, they're in tears and they're crying. I've prayed and I'm praying and I'm trying, and, 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 and on and on and on and on and on. But the thing I always notice is it's usually there by their own way. It's by their own way. It's not by God's way. So that means iniquity is in their heart because they're not doing it God's way. Uh, I, get, I, I have people that call me on the phone, send me emails, send me texts about, about how, uh, pray for me, Pastor, and pray, and I need, um, 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 um. you know what? Several of those that I'm thinking of right this moment, I see nowhere in this house. <coughs> and there comes a time that I have to say, I can't waste my time on you. That not that sad? But it's true. Um, it, you know, if you're not willing to help yourself, what can I do for you? That's what it comes down to. And it's, it, that's, that's, that's tough talk and tough love, but it's very true. We see here in 1 Peter chapter 3, how, how, how vulnerable, how, how, how touchy is God about prayer? I mean, prayer is a holy, holy thing. He don't talk to just anybody. <laughs> and, and he doesn't let just anybody talk to him. Uh, there's, there's ground rules. And we look here in verse, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 7, guys. <laughs> Likewise, who? Your husbands. Your husbands. 
Dwell with them according to what? You need to know your wives. You need to know what you're supposed to be doing. You need to know that, that, uh, that Christ, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and did, did what? He gave himself for it. My son-in-law's here today. Hi, hi Ron. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's going to do it. I know he is. <laughs> See, my son-in-law, when he, if he really wants to serve the Lord, he's going to have to love his mother and father-in-law <laughs> for his wife. For his wife. Not for us, but he's going to have to do it for his wife. And she's going to have to do it for him. Not for them, but for him. But, but husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church in so much that he gave himself for that. Hey, it don't stop when you get saved. It's just beginning, baby. <laughs> it's, just, it's just beginning. You want to hinder your prayers? Take a look at verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as what? It doesn't matter if she says, it's okay, honey, I can do it. You know, if Lot would have walked behind his wife, knowing the danger, you hear me? Knowing the danger. When we leave church, and I, I'm sorry, I've used this illustration ad nauseum probably. When we leave church, and my wife and I, is, we've driven separately to church, I follow her. And she messes with me because she, she'll, you know, uh, you know, I don't know which way she's going to go to go home. <laughs> but I'll follow her. Why do I follow her? Yeah, to make sure she's safe. To make sure I'm there. You know, Lot was told. He, he, he heard the instructions of God's man. Don't look back. If Lot really loved his wife and was doing what he should have been doing, where should he have been? In front of her like this? He should have been behind her. And as soon as that head started to turn, he should have stopped it. That's where he should have been. Protecting the what? The weaker vessel. The weaker vessel. That's what he says. And, and we know that likewise your husbands dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not... I can remember working as a law enforcement officer. I can remember going to the Drink 'em Up Saloon in Brimfield. And I can remember the bouncer at the front door saying, it wasn't John, <laughs> saying, you can't come in. Now, I'm in full uniform, but he's telling me I can't come in. <laughs> and, and I'm just kind of chuckling. And, and so I just took about a two-inch reach into his solar plexus with two fingers like that till I got a hold of his little xiphoid process there, and I, he let me in. <laughs> and, and, but it's funny. It's funny. He said, well, you can't go in. You can't go in. What are we looking at here? We're looking at here that, that in, in this verse, likewise, your husbands, that your prayers be not hindered. That man tried to hinder, he tried to hinder my admittance, didn't he? I had all the authority, I had the license to go in, but even though I had that, something got in the way. Something got in the way, and that which required me to take care of it. I put that in a spiritual sense. Even though through the Holy Spirit of God that seals me until the day of redemption and indwells this tabernacle that walks around going like this, even though I have all of that, that gives me authority to go to the throne of grace. Amen? Amen. Gives me authority to go there by Jesus Christ. Gives me the authority to go there through, via the Holy Spirit of God doesn't mean I'm going to get there. Something might hinder me. And something might hinder me. If there's iniquity in my heart, he's not going to hear me there. That's a dead stop in your tracks when there's iniquity in your heart. We, we, really, over, we really underestimate sin, don't we, in our lives. Oh, we're forgiven. 
But that's a proof text on how we have to live for God, how we have to talk to God, how we have to pray in our talk. So, so we see those things. Christians, uh, uh, we, we take our duty too lightly. We become negligent and we hinder or stop our own prayers. That's what happens to us. Or, or maybe we're so preoccupied by worries uh, uh, that we're not seeing ourselves coming into his presence. Uh, maybe that's something that, that hinders us. I can tell you what the scripture says. Be still. And know that I am God. That requires something of us. Stop. Be still. And know that I am God. Earnestly asking him to work through the Holy Spirit to lead us is what we need to do. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 6 again with me. Boy, I'm dragging this morning here. Pray with confidence. But you know what? We got this piano. Man, I was praying with some confidence. I mean, I was praying with some confidence because we walked into a place with $8,000 to spend. And I said, and the Lord said, look at that nice $14,000 piano. And that man in the place, ladies know, that was with me. Pastor, that's not it. That's not in the price range you guys were talking about. I said, I know it's not, but, you know, I think my God wants me to have this. <laughs> well, if your God wants you to have it, he's going to have to supply the money. Oh, if he wants me to have it, we'll get it some way. It'll happen. It'll happen. And we walked out with it, didn't we, folks? We walked out with the piano. And he even bought our old one from us. <laughs> yeah, you cannot do God, that's for sure. Um, we, we, in Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 7 and 8 with me again. But when we pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for much, their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of, when? Before you ask him. So praying with confidence. We have to pray with great confidence. Go to James chapter 1. I'm going to run through here as fast as I can in the next couple of minutes. <clears throat> I would like to finish this little section of notes I have. James chapter 1. <clears throat> and uh, look at verse 5 with me. Verse 5 says, if any of you lack what? Let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in what? You see, we have a part in that. We have an expectation. There's something that we have to meet. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. We were over with Brother Kissler the other night in Pennsylvania, and uh, uh, being over there, one of the things that he had mentioned uh, was... You know, when you ask in faith, you don't have a plan B. Oh, Lord, supply me. Lord, supply, Lord, I, I, would, Lord, I need this. Would you supply uh, this widget or gidget or whatever it might be? Lord, would you do that? And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, you know, if the Lord don't hear that, I got MasterCard. That's not praying in faith, folks. Okay, if you got a plan B... In your mind, in your heart, when you're praying, you're not praying in faith. You're just lip service. And me too. Me too. Praying in faith. He says, but him, let him ask in verse 6, in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive what? You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> we, don't we, we really take great liberty just because I'm saved, I can do whatever I want, and then I can pray and talk to God and ask God for whatever I want. I think the word tells us differently than that. There's a reasonable expectation of us not to have what in our heart? Sin. Iniquity in our heart. Not, not to be doing, be ye holy for I am holy. So there's a lot of things that can get in the way of our prayer life when we wonder why isn't this working? Why isn't this happening? One of the greatest uh, verses in prayer uh, when you look at, and looking at the elements of this, go to the book of First John with me. 
chapter 3. Listen, there's, there are far, far too many Christians that try to play, let's make a deal with God. Oh, I believe there's saved people that are outside of God's will. I think most of us can be that way. But there's some that are so far outside of his will that he's not listening to a thing they've got to say. I mean, that's evident from his word. But I think there's so many, so many Christians that, that after a while they begin to blame God because nothing's materializing out of their prayers. So they begin to say God's not real, or they blame God, their faith wanes, just all those things. But it, all, it always comes back to their condition. It's their condition that's, that's the one that's degrading. It's not God. Amen? And, and we see here in these verses, if you look in verse uh, 22 with me in chapter 3, and whatsoever we ask, that whatsoever means, it's like a whosoever. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because why? <laughs> why do we receive it of him? Well, what if we don't? <laughs> you know how many people aren't in the New Testament Baptist church today that wonder why they're not getting what they're asking for? Because they're not doing what he says. That's why they're not getting what they ask for. Because they're not doing what he says. It's not just here, believe me. It's, it's, it's all over throughout the bride of Christ. So as we look at these passages of scriptures again, we, we see again, <coughs> excuse me, in verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are what? <laughs> you know, and this is great. This is good stuff. Because the Lord knows exactly where you guys are at. Why does he know? Because his Holy Spirit's in you. And that's why he knows exactly where you're at. And, and if you weren't here, he still knows exactly where you're at. But because you're here, and he knows exactly where you're at, these are things that are pleasing in his sight. Amen. You're pleasing in his sight right now. We all are. And this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus and love one another as he gave his commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth, what? With him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. I have a real difficult time listening to lip service of people that tell me, that they're not convicted by the Holy Spirit for not being in God's house. Because I have a tendency to look right back at them and say, I don't believe you got the Holy Spirit if you're not convicted. My God's not a liar. I didn't author that statement. He did. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of warm and fuzzy people that think that they're going to be rejoicing up with Dorothy Farnsworth and us. But I got news for them. They believe the lie. They believe the lie. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, I'm going to stop here. I'll stop here. Let's close out in prayer. Our Father.